Hello, and welcome to the Awareness Self-Directed Learning. This module is really intended for staff of organizations or agencies that are going to be using the PACE card as part of their rollout of the PACE tool. So this is how to fill out the PACE card. We are now going to look at the PACE card. Now when will this card be used? The card is going to be used by an organization most likely when the PACE tool has been rolled out. A lot of organizations or agencies are having workers fill out these PACE cards usually for one to two weeks after they've done the initial training. This is done for two reasons. One is to create the habit of doing the PACE tool and the second one is to see how often things change from what the care plan says to what the worker actually has to do in any given day when they're doing any safe handling, mobility type tasks or activities. So this is what the card looks like as in its entirety. We are going to go through each individual section so that you understand how it's to be filled out correctly. So now we're going to start into the PACE card and we're going to look at the first section and it is pretty straightforward. It's the date and the time is the first piece of information we're looking for. And when I say time, I'm looking like probably in quarter hour time frames. I'm not looking to the precise minute, but the agency may give you more specific directions around that. Then we're looking for your name as the worker and the client's name. And that's just so we can link what's coming out of the planned activity, if that's different from what um, activities happen. So the first section is very straightforward to fill out. The next section of the PACE card has a little bit more detail. Now this is the activity that's planned, so what you were there to do. So there's a whole list of activities, whether it's toileting specifically, or whether it's the delivery of personal care, whether it's tuck in is tends to be the term we used in home care some long-term care agencies will use hs care which is that nighttime care whether you're repositioning transferring showering sponge bath bed bath or other activities that you may be doing so you simply just check one of those boxes so this is what you're planning on doing so for example you're planning on giving them a shower the next um box is whether they're uh, independent, one minute, one person assist or two person assist. And this is how it's indicated in the care plan. So for this um, example, we'll say it's a one person assist. And then if there's anything else in the care plan that may be there, if there's a lift required, whether um, there's any transfer or like slider sheets or any other equipment that may be required, you can indicate it here. So for our example, we're gonna say it's a shower and they're a one person assist. So now for the next section of the card is the actual pace section. Now this is, and I'm not gonna try to go over all of the elements of the pace tool. We're assuming when you're taking this module, you've already completed the pace tool sections. Now in saying that, as you know, when you go in to do your PACE, typically you're going to um, do the PACE in the reverse order, so starting with the E. So for our scenario, if we're going to give the person a shower um, and there's no obstacles, we would circle the green no obstacles. If there were some movable objects, we had to move a laundry hamper or something, then we may circle the yellow. Then we would go to the communications. So if they all, if they have good communications normally and they can um, converse back and forth with us and when we have our conversation with them that day, we indicate that yes, they have sufficient communication to be able to do the activity of the shower. We, we go ahead and that may be green. If for some reason their, their um, speech is a, um, a little different 
or they're not uh, able to really understand or something like that, then you may circle the yellow for limited. When we get to the A, if they have a history of no aggression and on that day there's no other indication, then you would circle the green. If they have a history of being unpredictable or some other type of um, um, acting out or behavioral um, difficulties, then you might circle the, the yellow in the unpredictable. We had already indicated in our scenario that they needed a little bit of assistance, a minimum assist, which is means that the worker's using less than 35 pounds of force. And when you do your assessment, they're able to weight bear and they're able to do that so you can circle that um, yellow there. So if we find that it's exactly along the care plan, then we can continue with activities and we'll talk about that in the next section. If for whatever reason, when you got there and their minimum assist and they're not able to roll over in bed or they're not able to weight bear, they're not able to do some of those things, which is why they have their classification for um, minimum assist, then you're going to circle the red, which is the moderate or the maximum assist. So your there's there may be no obstacles they may have good communication they may have no um, history of aggression in the past but now for whatever reason they're not able to weight bear uh, therefore they're not probably fall into the category of minimum assist and you're going to circle the moderate to maximum assist so let's see what we will do next once we've done those um, classifications of where they fall in the pace tool the next activity or the next section that you're going to um, fill out is did you complete the activity as planned? So if we go back to our scenario with the shower and we say, um, you know, there's there's no uh, there the, there's no objects in their way. Their communication is good. Um, they're they're exhibiting you know the same level of um, as needing minimum assistance and we're able to complete the shower as planned, you would tick yes. If when we did that assessment, everything seems to be fine except their mobility, then we may say no, we may check the no box. So we're saying we really are not set up to be able to give them a shower with the tools that we have. So you're gonna say, you're gonna tick no to the box where it says you didn't complete the activity as planned. And then most likely, um, when there's a significant change in the care plan like that, you're probably going to contact the supervisor and you just indicate, indicate whether you have or have not contacted the supervisor. And that's probably going to depend on your own company or agency's um, um, understanding of when you need to report to the supervisor. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next section of the pace cars. So in our particular scenario, they were minimum assists. So they, we didn't have any lifts or transfer sheets or slider sheets or any of that indicated um, as part of the plan. And we probably, if we're in home care, don't have a lift there unless one had been um, prescribed sort of through the, um, through the care planning activities. So when we move over to the next column, when it talks about um, change the changed activity so in our particular scenario if we've determined that they can't wait bear and it we're not we don't have the equipment and we're not set up to do a shower then we're going to change probably um, our planned activity now we may whatever the circumstances may not be able to do any bath at all of any kind but in this scenario i think um, we'd be quite comfortable and happens quite often that we opt to do a bed bath instead so you will just check that mark there and check that you did a bed bath and then the reason for the alternate service this is where you can put in and this is probably the most writing you're going to do in the whole form a little bit more detail around exactly why so you know mr brown wasn't feeling well or mr brown couldn't wait bear and so opted to do a bed bath uh today instead of doing a shower so that's that's the, the the most you have to write just a little bit of detail there giving a little bit more of that explanation on why you opted to do the bed bath 
Okay, so now we're going to look, we'll first take a look at the paste card that's not filled in. So we'll just take a quick look at that to review the um, parts of the card. So the date, the time, the worker's name, the client's name, the planned activity. Um, then you're going to go through and circle the paste um, elements that you did in your paste tool evaluation whether the activities were completed, if there was any changes, and notifying the supervisor. And then if there were planned activities, what does that look like? And a little note. So now we're going to look at the PACE card completed out for our scenario. Okay, now let's look at the completed card. So you'll see I put some of the information there at the top in red to help draw your eye to it. So the date in our scenario is September 1st, 2017 and it's at 10.15 a.m. in the morning. The worker's name is Sally Smith and the client's name is Mr. Bob Brown. You'll see a check mark next to shower because that's what we were planning on doing. And they're a one person assist, so you'll see that in the mobility plan activity. When we get down to the pace tool, you'll see we've circled a green for no obstacles, green for sufficient uh, for communication, and there's no history of aggression, so we have green for there. Now, if we had been on plan, we would have circled minimum assist and we would have been basically done at that point. But because we, um, when we did the pace, we found that they weren't able to bear weight, we're going to circle the red for moderate and maximum assist. Because usually in home care, there wouldn't be equipment there. So we have to change the activity plan. So instead, so the question is complete the activity as planned. No, it wasn't. So we're going to tick no. Did we change the activity plan? Yes. And did we notify the supervisor? Yes. Then we get down below where it says change activity. Then instead of we're going to tick off that we did a bed bath. The next section where it says reasons for the change, we're going to put a small note in there. So it gives a little bit of explanation and of exactly why we made the change. So we're just going to say something like Mr. Brown was not feeling well, could not wait bear, therefore we opted to do a bed bath instead. And then you've completed the card and you're all set to go. Now, as a reminder, these cards aren't intended to be done every time you use the PACE tool. Again, most organizations will ask you to do it for a period of time, and periodically they may ask you to do them every now and again just as a refresher. So you can now move on to the final slide, which is the instructions on how to do to complete the module. We've now reached the end of the PACE card um, session. Uh, thank you for participating. We're now going to have you close out the video, click on the link below and complete the post assessment evaluation and fill out the form. Once you do that, there's just one or two questions there and you will, um, if you get everything right, the certificate will pop up. Um, if you get one of the questions wrong, then it'll ask you to try again. So once you get your certificate, you can um, save that. And uh, if you're not able to print the certificate um, at the time you're taking it because you're on a mobile device and don't have access to a printer, that's okay. We have your records and we'll send those to your employer. Thank you.